Crocodilus anthropophagus, the man-eating crocodile of Oldeve. If you've ever stood near a river in Africa and felt uneasy, you're channeling a very old fear, one written into our DNA by Crocodilus anthropophagus, the man-eating crocodile. About 1.8 million years ago, in the same East African landscapes where our ancestors first walked upright, this monster lurked beneath the surface fossils from Tanzania's Olduvai Gorge show crocodile bite marks on the bones of early Homo habilis, the first known evidence that humans were on the menu. It grew over seven meters long, heavier than a pickup truck, and had jaws lined with conical, bone-crushing teeth. Its name literally means the crocodile that eats humans, and it earned it. Early humans came to water to drink, to fish, to live. Crocodilus anthropophagus came for them. It was the silent reaper of the Pleistocene rivers, invisible until it exploded from below, jaws clamping down with two tons of pressure. Its strategy was as simple as it was effective. Wait, strike, drown, devour. Even today, Nile crocodiles carry that same lineage of terror, but this ancestor was bigger, faster, and far less afraid of humans. When the Olduvai fossils were unearthed, scientists realized something chilling. Early humans didn't just evolve near rivers, they evolved despite them. Eurasian Cave Lion, the King Before Kings Before lions ruled Africa's savannas, their giant ancestors stalked the icy plains of Europe and Asia, and sometimes the mouths of caves humans called home. The Eurasian cave lion, Panthera spolea, stood nearly 1.2 meters tall at the shoulder, larger than any living lion. Its mane was smaller, its body leaner, its strength terrifying. Living from 400,000 to 14,000 years ago, this apex predator roamed from Britain to Siberia, sharing its territory with early humans and Neanderthals. Cave paintings in France show these lions clearly, muscular, regal, sometimes surrounding prey. But they also show something else. Humans feared them enough to draw them. The cave lion hunted bison, reindeer, and horses. But humans were also fair game. Archaeological sites contain human remains with claw and tooth marks. One fossil cave site in Europe even shows that cave lions entered caves humans had occupied, likely scavenging or ambushing them. Imagine sitting by a Paleolithic fire, hearing a low rumble in the dark, and realizing the growl wasn't thunder, it was breath. These lions disappeared around the end of the Ice Age possibly due to human hunting and climate shifts. But in their time, they were the apex of the apex. The original kings, before king of the jungle, was ever coined. All right, I will be posting more videos here. So slam that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. This helps us to rank better in the YouTube algorithm. Gigantopithecus, the ape that could have snapped you in half. Long before Bigfoot legends, there was a real giant ape, and early humans actually lived alongside it. Meet Gigantopithecus blackii, the largest primate to ever exist. Standing 3 meters tall and weighing over 500 kilograms, it roamed the subtropical forests of Southeast Asia about 2 million to 300,000 years ago. Its size was gorilla-like on steroids, towering, muscular, and heavily built. It wasn't strictly carnivorous, it likely ate bamboo, fruits, and roots. But when food grew scarce, a desperate Gigantopithecus could have been dangerous to anything nearby. Even early humans like Homo erectus. They overlapped in both time and territory. Fossils of Homo erectus and Gigantopithecus teeth have been found in the same Chinese cave systems. It's not hard to imagine a nighttime confrontation, a hungry ape, a frightened human, and a fire that suddenly feels too small. Its jaw was massive, built for crushing vegetation, but it could easily crush bones. Gigantopithecus eventually went extinct as forests thinned and competition grew fiercer. Its diet couldn't adapt, and its size became a liability. But legends of a forest giant persisted in Asian folklore. The Yeti, 
the Yaren echoes of a time when early humans really did live in the shadow of a giant. Megan Tyrion, the saber-toothed stalker. Before the famous Smilodon, there was Megan Tyrion, an earlier, smaller saber-toothed cat that made life miserable for early humans. Living between 2.5 and 1 million years ago, Megan Tyrion was about the size of a leopard, but far more muscular. Its canines stretched up to 10 centimeters long, precision tools for killing, not chewing. It prowled the African savannas where early Homo erectus and Homo habilis evolved. Fossils show both species bore tooth marks consistent with saber-toothed cats, meaning Megantyrion wasn't above eating us. It was an ambush predator, using stealth and muscle rather than speed. Picture it crouching low in the tall grass as a small group of early humans wandered by, distracted, unarmed, vulnerable. Then, silence breaks. A blur, a scream, and gone. Unlike modern big cats, Megantyrion likely killed with surgical precision, stabbing arteries or windpipes with its long teeth, avoiding bone. It was nature's assassin, and humans were just one of many potential targets. Ironically, early humans may have learned from predators like Megantyrion, copying their hunting strategies and eventually outsmarting them. But for thousands of years, the balance wasn't in our favor. In the Pleistocene food chain, we were still just another meal. Host's Eagle, the Sky Assassin of New Zealand. If you think eagles are majestic, imagine one that could kill you. Host's Eagle, Hieratus Moray, was the largest eagle to ever live, and it hunted humans. Found in prehistoric New Zealand, Host's Eagle had a 3 meter wingspan, weighed up to 15 kilograms, and had talons as big as tiger claws. Its legs were thicker than a human wrist, built to crush and pierce flesh in a single strike. It fed primarily on giant flightless birds called moa, but when the Maori people arrived around the 13th century, the eagles saw something new. Upright, slow-moving prey, Maori oral traditions speak of a massive bird, the puakai, that swooped down to carry people away, almost certainly inspired by Host's eagle. It attacked from above, diving at speeds over 80 kilometers per hour, slamming prey to the ground before tearing into it with its beak. Even armor wouldn't have saved you. When the Mari hunted Moa to extinction, Host's eagle lost its food source and soon followed. In the end, humanity outlasted its own sky demon. But for centuries, it ruled New Zealand's skies as the undisputed lord of terror. Giant short-faced bear, the Landstalker, Standing three meters tall on its hind legs and weighing over 900 kilograms, the giant short-faced bear, Arctotus simus, was one of the most terrifying mammals to ever walk North America. It wasn't built like modern bears. It had long legs, a lean torso, and a narrow face. Built not for lumbering, but for speed. Scientists estimate it could run 60 kilometers per hour, faster than a racehorse. This apex predator hunted across the Ice Age plains, likely preying on megafauna like bison and horses, and occasionally scavenging early humans or their kills. Its smell was so keen, it could detect carrion from kilometers away. It might have followed human groups, driving them off carcasses, towering above them like a walking fortress. Imagine being a hunter in Ice Age Alaska, spear in hand, fresh kill on the ground, and hearing the low thunder of approaching footsteps. The short-faced bear didn't sneak. It arrived. It vanished around 12,000 years ago, when the Ice Age ended and large prey declined. But while it lived, it was the North American nightmare, a running bear the size of a car. Humans may have feared it, but they also learned from it the need to hunt fast, defend food, and cooperate. Survival Lessons, written in bear tracks. Megalania, the Komodo dragon that ate people. Australia doesn't need help being terrifying, but it used to be worse. Meet Megalania, Varanus priscus, the largest land lizard ever known. Up to seven meters long and weighing half a ton, 
it was basically a Komodo dragon on military funding. It lived during the Pleistocene, just 40,000 years ago, alongside the first Aboriginal Australians. That means humans definitely saw it, and some probably didn't live to tell about it. Megalania hunted giant marsupials, snakes, and possibly early humans. Like modern monitor lizards, it likely had venom glands that caused shock and blood loss in prey, meaning one bite was a death sentence, even if you got away. Its ambush strategy was simple. Wait near water holes or shade, then strike with shocking speed. Aboriginal legends of giant reptiles, how, or Bunyip, may trace back to memories of Megalania. It went extinct around the same time humans spread across Australia. Whether we hunted it or simply outcompeted it, we'll never know. But the fact that humans survived a land where 20 foot lizards once hunted speaks volumes. Megalania was Australia's final boss, and humanity barely beat the level. Giant short faced hyena, the bone crushing nightmare. Europe's Ice Age plains were home to lions, wolves, and mammoths, but the scariest sound in the night was laughter. Meet the giant short faced hyena, Pachicracuda brevirostris, the largest hyena ever to live. Standing a meter tall at the shoulder and weighing 120 kilograms, it was a bone breaking brute with jaws that could crush through femurs like twigs. It lived across Africa, Europe, and Asia between 2.5 million and 500,000 years ago often in the same regions as early humans. Fossil sites suggest they didn't just scavenge, they hunted, big game like horses and bison, but also hominins when the opportunity arose. Some ancient human bones show distinctive punctures matching hyena teeth. Unlike today's spotted hyenas, they were solitary or hunted in small groups, using ambush rather than endurance. Once they got close, their bite did the rest. To early humans, caves weren't safe because hyenas used them too. In Spain and China, hyena dens have been found filled with human bones. The giant hyena eventually disappeared as humans advanced and prey declined. But for hundreds of thousands of years, it was the creature that haunted every Paleolithic night. The laughter in the dark wasn't always from your tribe. Megalocarus giganteus the killer deer. Yes, a deer makes the list, but not because it wanted to eat humans, because it could kill them anyway. The Megalocarus gigantus, or Irish elk, was the largest deer ever to walk the earth. It stood 2.1 meters tall at the shoulder, with antlers spanning over 3.5 meters across, wider than most cars. It wasn't a predator, but try explaining that to an early human in its path. These Ice Age giants lived across Eurasia, grazing the frozen plains alongside mammoths and woolly rhinos. During mating season, males fought brutally for dominance, locking those massive antlers in thunderous clashes. Early humans hunted them for meat and hides, but that wasn't without risk. A cornered Megaloceros could charge like a bull, trampling and goring anything nearby. One swing of those antlers could shatter ribs. Its size and grace also inspired awe. Cave paintings depict them with reverence, possibly as symbols of strength or survival. By 7,000 years ago, they vanished, victims of climate change and human hunting. The Irish elk wasn't evil, but to the humans who faced one head on, it was every bit as deadly as the predators that prowled beside it. If you've watched to this point, slam that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. This helps us to rank better in the YouTube algorithm.